<laughs> this meeting is being recorded. There you go. Okay, there you go. Got it. Got it. All right. Public notice of regular meeting by video conference. The January 18, 2022 meeting of the Fox River Valley Public Library District Board of Trustees beginning at 7 p.m. will be conducted by video conference without a physically present quorum of board trustees in accordance with state law. The board president has determined an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent because of the continued disaster declaration from the governor's office related to COVID-19. Nor is it feasible for a library trustee, the executive director or library attorney to be present at the library. Notice of this virtual meeting has been provided to the public in advance and instructions to attend virtually and or comment were detailed in that notice. A recording of this meeting will be available on the library's website by Friday, January 28th. So I call the January 18 Fox River Valley Public Library District Board of Trustees meeting to order at 7.02. Um, can everyone see and hear each other? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All votes will be roll call tonight because we are meeting by video conference. Um, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, United States, of, America, States of America and, and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Terry Evans, can you call the roll, please? Yes. Matt? Here. Marianne? Here. Tara? Here. Dave? Here. Chris? Here. Richard? Here. Christina? Here. We're all here. The board recognizes its responsibility to provide an opportunity for anyone wishing to comment at any meeting to do so. Due to the current public health concerns, the January 18, 2022 meeting will be conducted by video conference. Any person viewing this meeting online and or wishing to comment will be accommodated in accordance with the stated public notice. Citizens will not be requested to sign in to comment and each speaker will be allowed five minutes. Are there any comments? Okay. Um, I have nothing to report in the president's report, so we'll go right into the director's report. Amy, you're muted. Amy. Oopsie, sorry. <laughs> we'll start this portion uh, with a presentation from Tammy and Dawn at Ellers. And so I will um, let them present right now and then we'll get to the rest of it. Yes, good evening. Thank you so oh. much for allowing me to attend. Can everyone hear me okay? Great. Yes. Okay, so I apologize. I'm, I'm traveling a, a little bit and uh, I, I asked Dawn to join me tonight just in case I have any challenges with Wi-Fi. So she's, she's in her home office and I'm here in the hotel <laughs> office. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed we couldn't meet in person tonight, but I certainly look forward to meeting you all in person at some point in the future, hopefully when we all get past this pandemic. Uh, but just a little bit of background, we've worked with the library district for some time now. So Dawn and I are investment advisors. We consult with your team to ensure that your investments are not only compliant with state statute, but your own investment policy. And we guide you through any required updates of those policies. Um, in your board packet, you probably have the PDF of our presentation. 
And just to give you a little bit of background, and I, I won't cover all of this in full detail, but I wanted to be sure everyone understands um, who we are and, and how we help you. So on that page two, you'll see a little bit about our firm as a company. So we have been registered since 2007 officially. Um, we have a little under two billion of assets under management. That includes um, clients just like you in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Illinois. We do have a few clients in Colorado and I believe two in Kansas. So we only work with municipal entities, uh, whether that be school districts, towns, cities, village, county, counties, or library districts. Uh, we have uh, 160 plus clients and about 270 separate accounts. We do only work you know, with fixed income type of investments and we'll get into a little bit more of that in a minute here. But our typical clients include those with assets to invest either with debt proceeds. So if you ever go out and issue bonds or notes, um, or even if you have ex excess uh, project funds or general funds. So we work with you in a couple of different ways with accounts. We also, Dawn is on the call as well. She is our banking services expert. So she has many years of treasury management expertise. And we do at times talk to your team about making sure that your banking services are up to date. So if we take a look at the next page here, um, I always like to just put this in here so that you have an understanding. With public funds, we have some specialized uh, expertise, I would say, but we really are a registered investment advisor, very similar to somebody who you might work with for your 403B or 401K or your IRA funds. We work in a fiduciary capacity as an extension of your team. We owe you what's called the duty of loyalty and a duty of care. Really, that just means we put your interests ahead of our own, and we like to always act as a partner for you. Uh, we work directly with your team just to make sure that investment decisions, we provide that guidance and expertise, but we also want to make sure that everyone is fully aware of the investment types available to you, and if there are any changes that we recommend. We also bring a, a level of expertise as it relates to the markets, especially with fixed income type of investments, and we'll get into a little bit more of that later. But if we take a peek at page four, just to give you an idea of how we work, uh, we, we really have three phases to our overall process. And, and on the page, it, it works linear, but it really is like cyclical. We do a lot of work on the front end to make sure that the current portfolios make sense. And if they don't, where do we need to adapt? We do work with you to develop solid policies and we work to update those as we see uh, state statutes occasionally change. We also want to make sure that the investments that we are recommending fit within your operational or project cash flows. And of course, always want to make sure that you have cash needed for, for those potential items. We do like to make sure that on the imp implementation phase that we are continually working together to maintain that portfolio. So on the front end, of course, we built your portfolio with a laddered strategy so that you as a library district have periodic maturities to match cash flow, but also a little bit of income. So we talk a lot about what we do and, and ultimately the objective of your portfolios are safety, which is principal protection. Uh -oh. Yeah, I lost her. <laughs> <laughs> you froze, Tammy. Let's see if she comes back. Okay. So, oh, she's back. No. Oh gosh. There you are. Hi, uh, okay. Just to, we'll we'll kind of go through this part of it quickly because you guys probably understand we work really hard to make sure that everyone's on the same page. We want to make sure that you are all educated on what's going on in your portfolio, and we maintain that compliance as well. So on to the next page here. We have page five. Um, this really is where I will talk a little bit about the permissible investments. So as a client, you are restricted to what is called um, permissible investments under state statute. So those are listed here. And this is really, this isn't full details of what's in that statute. It's actually about uh, two pages of printed material. But I like to make sure that it's some sort of insurance or principal protection. So 
when you think about um, FDIC insured CDs, that's a simple one. They are provide, we provide an FDIC insurance coverage and we seek to keep each of them under that $250,000 amount. If we are investing in US government, say treasury bills or notes, those are backed by the US government. And if we are investing in agency securities, so sometimes you'll see US agency bonds as an investment option. Just to give you an idea, there are two types. One is government sponsored enterprise. Those particular investments have a government guarantee, but they are an agency of the government. And the other type are actually, uh, they're enterprises that are, they're, an, they're basically a public, they're for public purpose, but they are, or they're a private purpose, but they're, for, they're backed by the government. So there's an implied guarantee. Uh, regardless, those are always, uh, we, we reference them in agencies. But uh, the overall portfolio, and we'll talk a little bit about this in a minute as well, is generally, we, we generally are looking for those type of instruments that offer some sort of principal protection. Um, you do have the option of a pooled investment fund, and you probably have heard about the Illinois fund. It works very similar to a money market in that it's a short-term cash-like investment. Um, you also technically could invest in some corporate debt and municipal bonds or notes of other municipal issuers. Uh, but uh, you don't have to do so. We, we certainly balance some of the risks that are in each of those investment types with what is in your investment policy, as well as, um, you know, what's available in the market. Um, do, does anyone have any questions about the general idea behind the limitations on the investment portfolio by state statute or any questions about some of those investment opportunities that are available to you? Okay. Uh, moving on to the next page is actually where we can take a peek at your overall portfolio summary. And I apologize if this is small print. I realize when we uh, create these in a digital format, it looks really nice as a web page, but then I print it out or put it on these pages and it becomes very small. So it's probably good that we are meeting virtually tonight because uh, if you're looking on PDF, you can see there's a Zoom feature where you can actually make the page a little bigger. Now, just to give you an idea, this is the 2021 portfolio summary at the end of the year, 1231, 2021. And you can see here that the beginning market value and the ending market value do differ. You guys have been using or leveraging some of these funds for projects. You have taken out of the account a little over a million dollars. Even considering that deduction, you have earned interest for the year of $71,000. And then, of course, from a we don't take the fees out of our out of the accounts, but um, we can talk a little bit about that as well. Um, we offer two different options, so you can either have the fees automatically deducted from the account, or you can be invoiced for them. And the library has elected to invoice them, regardless of which option you choose. We like to be very transparent with the fees, and we do provide that detail on your statement every month, so that you are aware of how much you are paying. And of course, if we take a peek on just below that first box, you'll see the exposure or asset class is divided. You have a, a little bit of municipal bonds as well as CDs. So it's about, it's about half and half. So you've got 46.5% of municipals and about 53% in CDs. Now, the actual maturity of those investments, we do ladder those so that you have periodic in maturities to cover cash flow. And you'll take a if you take a peek on the right, that time to maturity, you'll see those peaks and valleys. And that really just represents uh, the approximate amounts that you have maturing in those time frames. So you'll see you have a substantial amount maturing in about one year. And the average in the portfolio or what's called the weighted average life represented in that middle box at WAL is 0.899, which is slightly under one year. So that is a pretty short portfolio. And especially if you're using this towards any sort of operational or project expenses, we wanna make sure that there are funds available when you need them. So the book yield of the portfolio represents any purchases made in the account, any expenses, the income that is in, earned on the portfolio is at 1.5%. To give you an idea of what that looks like from a benchmarking standpoint, the liquid funds that are available for investment right now or cash type investments are typically trending about 0 0.10 or lower. <clears throat> so the portfolio is performing pretty well. And of course, we, we always like to remind everyone that the 
point of this portfolio is not necessarily growth, but it really is that safety of principle and that predictability in yield. So that is why we are purchasing investments that are fixed income. So those really are just fixed price, fixed coupon. You know what you're paying, you know what you're going to receive when they mature. And of course, you know what coupons. <clears throat> and if we take a peek at the page seven, <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. Now my page is too big. Sorry, let me minimize that. I want to make sure that you are aware of the team itself. So it's not just my face that you can see if we um, present to you in the future or anytime that we speak with Heather and her group. It's really a whole team of people. So Dawn's on the call with me tonight. And of course, we have um, Ryan Miles, who is our manager as well. And he is up in our Minnesota office. Brian Riley is our president. He's in our Minnesota office. And Cliff Janney um, also works in our Minnesota office. But at any time, if you need anything, it's not just us. You have a whole team of people available to you. In addition, on page eight, apologies, <coughs> you will see that we have an entire team of traders. And they work really hard to make sure that any investments that we are providing to you are at the best price that we can get in the market. And we're always checking, checking nationwide markets for your, for your investments. So I covered a lot of information in a, a very short time frame. I want to be sure that we have some time for questions in case anything has come up. Um, but certainly, don't be afraid if you think of something after we get off the call. We're happy to help. Um, Tammy, hi. Uh, Thanks for your presentation tonight. Mm -hmm. um, just one question. Um, you, uh, you work with uh, other public libraries, uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Right? Yep. And, and can you uh, compare maybe uh, the uh, uh, risk uh, profile of our um, investments versus some of the other libraries that you work with? Of course. And um, rest assured, most libraries are fairly conservative. And really, as an investment advisor, uh, Dawn and I are very conservative in our recommendations. <clears throat> and part of that is because nobody's going to celebrate if I get you a little bit of extra yield on an investment, but you will be very upset if I were to lose you any principal. So your portfolio is very conservative. And we do, <clears throat> obviously, the, the, the investments that are available to you under state statute has an array of risks. The investments that we are typically looking for offer that principal protection in some way or some a semblance of insurance. And of course, the short time frame also limits some of that risk. So your portfolio could be, <clears throat> you could extend some of those maturities out if you don't need the funds. That could potentially lead to additional income, but the risk profile of your portfolio is not dissimilar to other library districts. And really a lot of our municipal clients are set up very similarly. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Any other questions or does anybody want me to go into full detail about municipal bonds? <laughs> <laughs> I joke that I can talk for hours about it, but I won't no, bore you right. with details. You pay us to be your experts and certainly I want to be sure that everyone's questions are answered, but I won't take up any more of your time um, if there aren't any further questions. Thank you. Great, and Don, did you have anything that, I, that you wanted to add in case I missed anything when I was you know, blurring in and out here? <laughs> no, I think you've covered it. Um, I would like to just uh, let you know how much we appreciate your business. Um, it has, as Tammy said, it's been uh, many years. It might even be a decade, I don't know. It's been a long time that we've, uh, we've enjoyed the relationship and I wanna thank you for your business. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you all. Have a lovely evening and uh, certainly stay warm. <laughs> you too. You too. And healthy. <laughs> you <Yes>. too. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. Great. Okay. Um, to continue on with the director's report section, um, I know you all have my report in front of you and I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but um, 
some quick updates. We still haven't had warm enough weather to get the roof done, um, but it's it's ready to go. It's not really a delay, um, like we're waiting for supplies or labor or anything. Um, we just have to wait until it warms up a little bit, um, but it's all ready to go and that's great. Um, and as you know, the concrete project was completed. We have new sidewalks and steps, yay, and ramps and, um, Everyone that I've talked to on the staff is just thrilled about this. So I think it, it took a long time to get this done and, and it's a big relief for everybody. So uh, I'm happy about that. And then um, we'll be getting new doors on the front and back side of the library, or well, not front and back, I shouldn't say that, east and west, um, which you'll be talking about in a few minutes. Um, and I'm excited about that project as well. Um, right now, our our COVID situation has improved a little bit, knock wood, I don't wanna jinx us, but at the moment, um, when we, we only have one person at home uh, related to COVID and he comes back tomorrow. So um, so that's really great, but that could change tomorrow. So <laughs> it changes every day. We have people who are exposed, people who have tested positive, people who live with someone who's tested positive. E every single situation is unique, um, but uh, Heather Zabsky and I are, are keeping a close watch on it, and Heather is probably the most informed person of all, and uh, she's she's been amazing through this whole thing. So, um, and then I decided to buy some N95 masks uh, for the staff. Um, they're they're expensive. I don't want to provide them to the public unless something changes and we have to, um, but to have them as an option for the staff. They're not required, but if they feel safer with that, then we're providing them. Um, and I was glad to do that. So um, I think that pretty much concludes all the highlights of my report. Um, and unless anyone has questions, um, I'll hand it over to Heather to talk about the update to the strategic plan. Okay. Am I showing up? I've been having yep. technical difficulties today, which have forced me into my basement. So I am sorry <laughs> that my Zoom background is less professional than my office would be. Um, <laughs> so, <all> right. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the second year of our strategic plan uh, that goes through June uh, 2023. Um, and I compiled a document which is in the board packet um, that highlights our annual accomplishments this year. Um, despite it being our second year uh, living through the COVID-19 pandemic, um, staff has accomplished an extraordinary amount. Um, and so I just wondered if trustee had any questions or comments on the strategic plan updates in the board packet. Mm -mm. No, it's, it's uh, quite an impressive list of accomplishments. Uh, you know. I'm amazed at what our library's been able to do under the circumstances. You guys yeah. j just awe me in the truest sense of the word awe. Well, if there are no other comments or questions, um, the department reports are in your packet. We don't need to go over that unless anyone has any questions. Um, that's simply reading material. And then um, the dashboard. And Heather, do you have any comments about the dashboard? I don't think so. Our numbers just went down a little bit um, over the holidays, which is pretty typical. Um, checkouts are still remaining pretty strong, which is, is nice to see. Just uh, a question, Heather, uh, I think we're showing the last six months, is that right? Did we used to show 12 months? Yes, this is an open, I'm so impressed that you noticed this, I have to say, because I've been doing this for years and no one's noticed. Um, so open <laughs> software is tied to the financial year and I've come up with a way to hack it so that it shows rolling 12 months, but when we get through about six months in the year, I just then tie it back to our financial, um, year again. 
I can do the rolling 12 months. It's just a little bit more work. Um, and at some point it starts to lose its significance. So. Yeah, I, I guess my, I always had a kind of a beef with 12 months when, you know, it, it does kind of tend to be a seasonal business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it'd be nice to, <laughs> it's nice to show 13 months if, if we could, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Would that... Would that be all that much more work? Um, I, because I, you know, I, I don't, when I look at, you know, how we did in the summer versus how we did in December, it's, you know, I, it, it just doesn't mean that much to me, you know, in, in at least in, in some of those, on some of those charts. So I agree with you, Dave. I always wish that this view showed me you know december 2021 versus december 2020 right um yeah and in fact if 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 that's all we showed i i think that would be of more use maybe than than even the the trend i i don't know but uh i agree it just seems like if you're going to show it then um you know make it worth the worth the trouble so I can look into OpenGov software. I know for sure I won't be able to do 13 months. That's beyond its capabilities. It can barely do 12 months. It can only do 12 months because I figured out how to manipulate it. <laughs> okay. Um, I probably yeah. could do December to December. I'll just have to contact them and open a ticket as those two, but it, it can't do more than 12 graphs. Um, just because I think the primary focus of it is just the fiscal year. We'll, we'll leave it to you to work your magic then. Thank okay, you. Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Whatever you can do. Great. So any other questions or comments about any of these reports? I just want to say the department reports are, you know, impressive as usual. The Holiday activities were pretty great. Nice to see how, um, it was nice to see the fact that when the Dundee Library was closed, it seemed like a lot of patrons migrated to the Randall Oaks Library. It seemed mm -hmm. like we had kind of a bump. It was cool. Um, that yeah. was encouraging. And the, strategic plan update was wonderful. Thank you for being so thorough, Heather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Once again, well, along, I, I look, I'm sorry, Dave, go ahead. Well, along the lines of like uh, license plate renewals and notary and, you know, kind of mm -hmm. unusual library services, um, I. I read that uh, some library systems are uh, involved in uh, test kits for uh, COVID, and and I'm just wondering if if you've heard anything about that, or is there a possibility for us to uh, be involved in that? What what it might involve? Well. Uh, I don't know if you're addressing me or Heather, but Heather did look into that. Um, the test kits are expensive um and so it would be a big investment for us um at the moment we're not going forward with that however um we will be having vaccination events at the library in february uh which is fabulous um but i'll let heather talk about the testing kits part because she knows more than i do i don't think it's a matter of paying for them i i right I was probably reading some of the same stuff that Dave was reading with the the ones that are being given to the community. Like I signed up on the post office's website today right. to get my four free kits in the mail. But those free kits that are being disseminated through the communities, I think in some areas, um, one of the places to pick those up is the public library. Oh, I see. Sorry. I right. misunderstood. <laughs> I, I, I should have made that clear. Yeah. Well, uh, we we have not jumped onto that yet, but um, it's something that we can definitely investigate. 
Uh, and right. I honestly have to admit, I don't know much about it. So I'd have to make yeah. some calls, but it, it would be wonderful if we could do that. So we'll definitely look into it. It's just a suggestion. So thank No, you. I love it. That's great. I, I, I was just going to say um, before that I think the number of programs that are offered, especially for middle school kids, are just wonderful. You know, that's a hard group. They're a they're a tough audience, and and to get uh, to get the attendance and to get kids interested is just amazing. You guys never cease to amaze me of all you offer. And uh, I said before the meeting, I took part in the history of Dundee program on Saturday, which was really, really interesting. And I learned a lot. And I just, you guys just are amazing. And you just keep bringing it. I, I just, um, yeah. I, the one comment I wanted to make was, I don't know if any of you saw the article on from NPR about social workers. It was last week. And um, there are three libraries that have part-time ones. And they did a piece on the full-time social worker at the Indianapolis Library. And I hope that's on the docket soon for us because the services that they provide are wonderful. And I, I know it would be something our community could really benefit from. Absolutely, yes, thank you. Well, all of the amazing programs are due to incredible staff. I mean, we are so fortunate to have all of these wonderful people here who do cutting edge programs um, and do some things that I never thought possible when I started in this career. <laughs> so um, really our, our staff um, from top to bottom is just really top notch. I'm on a web page where a lot of librarians are complaining that people don't attend the programs. And I look at ours and people attend ours, so, yeah, yeah, right. you know, and there are library librarians out there who are really upset because they plan them and they put a lot of work into them and they have like the science STEM kits and stuff and people don't take advantage of it. And that just doesn't happen in our library. So I think yeah. word has gotten out and I, I think we're doing a good job of um, letting people know what we have mm -hmm. yeah. for them. So thank you so much to everybody. All right, is there anything else? Not for me. All right, thank you. Um, before I call for a motion on the consent agenda, are there any items trustees would like withheld for discussion prior to approval? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve items A1A through A1P under the consent agenda as presented. So moved. So moved. Seconded. Second. Okay, I'm gonna give that to Richard. Hey. And hey. I'll give the second one to Dave. <laughs> Marianne, you get in the next one. <laughs> you gotta be quick around here. <laughs> A motion has been made by Richard and seconded by Dave to approve items A1A through A1P under the consent agenda as presented. Chris, can you please call the roll? Matt. Agreed. Mary Ann? Yes. Tara? Yes. Dave? Yes. Chris, yes. yes. Richard? Yes. Christina? Yes. The yeses have it. All right, we have no unfinished business this evening. I will now entertain a motion to adopt ordinance 2022-01 non-resident cards as presented. So moved. It's a second. I didn't catch who the first was. Tara. It was Tara. Thank you. All right, a motion has been made by Tara and seconded by, was that Dave? 
to adopt ordinance 2022-01 num resident cards as presented and is open for discussion. So this is the ordinance that we have to approve every year. Mm -hmm. um, just, we don't really have any non-residents aside from possibly uh, people who own businesses in the community. Mm -hmm. um, but does anyone have any questions about that? Does that also include teachers who are not residents, but in our school district or no? I think that falls under something else. Something else, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so, I mean, it, it works here too. So to what extent is this privilege actually used by anybody? Do we have any idea or? It's, it's not really used in my understanding um, because we don't have unserved pockets of the community in our district. So it's it's an ordinance that we have to pass every year um, as part of our membership in rails. And it's supposed to address um, those who are in unincorporated areas or other parts of the district that do not have library access, but that's not the case in our district, um, but we still have to comply. When I lived in Crystal Lake, we were actually in an unincorporated Crystal Lake. And so we had to take our tax bill into the public library every year and pay mm -hmm. to get library cards. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. So that's how that works. I fully expected to have to do that when we moved to unincorporated Dundee. I was prepared to do that because when I lived in Mount Prospect, I had to do that. Yeah. So I was happy I didn't when I moved here. <laughs> okay. All right. The motion on the floor is to adopt ordinance 2022-01 non-resident cards as presented. Um, Chris, please call the roll. Matt? Yes. Marianne? Yes. Tara? Yes. Dave? Yes. Chris, yes. Richard? Yes. And Christina? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Exhibit C2, award contract for removal and replacement of Dundee Library East and West Side entrance doors. I will now entertain a motion to award a contract for removal and replacement of the East and West Side entrance doors at the Dundee Library to CAD contract glazing ink in an amount not to exceed $57,500. So moved. Seconded. Okay, a motion has been made by Richard and seconded by Marianne to award a contract for removal and replacement of the East and West Side entrance doors and is now open for discussion. Well, I for one uh, am just delighted. We finally, we're finally getting to the point where we're moving ahead with these doors. It's been a, an issue with me for a long time. And it's, uh, I'm, Amy, I commend you for moving forward on this. This is, uh, it's, it's overdue. I do have a question. Now, what we're talking about really are three doors, right? We've got the outer, on the east side, we've got the outer door and then the inner door. Both of those are gonna be replaced? Um, let me double check. I don't think so. I thought it was just the front door, um, but Michael is present, if he can correct me. Because the, 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 the same issue would, would uh, right. of, uh, you know, not, not having full access unless both of those doors are replaced. Well, unless we're getting rid of the inner door altogether, it could be that. Um, I don't have the bid in front of me, unfortunately, um, but since Michael is um, logged into the meeting, he can always correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I agree, Richard. It, it makes no sense to just replace one of those doors with an automatic door. They both need to be replaced. And I, I'm 
I'm guessing, I'm just assuming that that's the plan. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I shouldn't assume that. I, I haven't seen the plan. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> Yeah. I, I would assume it's both. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Quite frankly, I was surprised that I thought the, the this amount would be much more because we're going to be looking at three doors and mm -hmm. and that the one on the west. It's not just it, there's the door, but isn't there the wall or the uh, the the window wall kind of a thing surrounding it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that will have to be cut back. Um, because the new door will be bigger um, and it's um, to make it ADA compliant. And so they will have to change that frame. Um, I'm not an expert on how much these things cost, but um, actually the whole project was more than what we expected, but still um, a really good affordable bid. Um, and so I'm assuming they've included all of that in the pricing, even though I don't have it in front of me. Okay, I think that's important now that. Mm -hmm. Can you share that with us? Yes, absolutely. Oh, I don't okay. know if, well, Karen's in the office. I don't know if she can uh, pull that up and put it on the screen or not. Are you talking about the bid notice? Uh, the bid itself, actually. The bid itself. Yes, I've got the bids here. Uh, I'm just looking at that. Bear with me just a moment. Yeah, the bid, I'm looking for something that describes the scope of work and the bids refer to it, but they're not necessarily here. Um, I keep looking here, hang on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, the proposed project consists of removal and replacement of the main east entrance and side west entrance doors at the Fox River Valley Public Library District. It doesn't really break it down into the two sections of entrance, of entrance doors on the east side, but nevertheless, that second door is an entrance door. Right. So logic would dictate. I mean, we can certainly clarify that and confirm that, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's all we have. Right. Right now. Can you do that? Sure, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. And then just let us know. So, do we need to do we need to clarify that before we give them the contract? I mean, yes, I think Amy does, but we don't need to clarify that before we vote. I think. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I think we, we vote assuming that it is. And Amy, if, if it's not, then I think you need to, to, to stop it until we talk again. Right. If, if yeah. it's going to impact, you know, the, the now this includes install, tear out, installation, wiring, yes. everything. Okay, All of it. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. The only thing that there's a new locking system, I guess, that's going to not be part of this contract it looks like Corey. yeah that'll be a separate contract from uh, a separate contractor um but the work would be done in tandem with the door replacement because it just makes sure. sense to do that okay most of the locks will be electronic locks um that will operate with a key fob rather than a, a you know a, a little punch board on the door or you know a combination lock or something like that it'll be um uh, a very modern um, way to 
lock not just the library but many of the doors with within the library you know offices and so on as yeah, long so as fashion key lock right <laughs> right <laughs> i have one, one more question about the doors should there be a power failure and you have to how easy is it to open these things it's pretty easy actually they come with an emergency um push mechanism where you can literally just push them out and get out um, okay. and, and it pushes them off the tracks. Um, so yeah, they come with that uh, and they've been that way for quite a while um, and, and it's easy uh, to get out in case of fire, power failure or whatever. Okay, good. I assume that was, but I just wanted to ask that question. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? All right, the motion on the floor is to award a contract for removal and replacement of the East and West Side entrance doors at the Dundee Library to CAD Contract Glazing Inc. in an amount not to exceed $57,500. Chris, can you call the roll? Yeah. Yes. Mary Ann? Yes. Tara? Yes. Dave? Yes. Chris? Yes. Richard? Yes. Christina? Yes. The eyes have it. Okay. Exhibit C3, minimum wage requirement, update salary scale. I will now entertain a motion to approve the updated salary scale as presented. So moved. Seconded. A motion's been made by Dave and seconded by Richard to approve the updated salary scale as presented and is open for discussion. So I guess one, one question, this is mainly brought about by um, a change in the minimum wage and and the compression that occurs with that. So when the folks at the bottom get a raise, then um, I, I guess it doesn't necessarily mean everybody gets a raise because this is still just affecting mainly the minimums, right? Right. It is, but you know that it does create the kind of conditions where there needs to be a little bit of a bump at all levels, at least at, um, you know, the kind of bottom third of our mm -hmm. right. organization, I would say. And, and uh, we're proposing to put this in effect uh, July 1 of this year when in fact, the the law actually changes with uh, January January one of next year, right? Twenty twenty three. But right. is it that's a because it makes it easier or? Yeah, or? our fiscal year starts in um, July, and we make all the changes to um, pay in in July. So it's just saving us the step of doing it twice, basically. It makes sense. And do we do we know the um, the overall impact of these changes? It depends, um, because the salary scale is a little more complicated than that. Um, but I think overall, I'm not sure the total overall impact of it in, in terms of a financial, just because it, it might involve um, positions changing and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is hard to kind of gauge that because while you might be hiring in at the higher wage down below, you know, like, mm -hmm. You might have a librarian who's at the top of the salary schedule or at the bottom of the salary schedule. And so 
it it washes out maybe one year, whereas another year it wouldn't. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't know that it's really easy to quantify that way. Mm -hmm. So I guess one other question is, um, you know, it's a competitive labor market. You know, how how does this scale compare to our peers? I mean, well, we I think that's any, something that we'll look. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, do we have any 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 data on that? I don't, but it's something that I will want to evaluate when we're going through the budget process for the next fiscal year. And I would also like to, at some point, um, do a compensation and classification study. I don't believe we've done one in a while. Um, they're also called comp and class study for short. Um, but I think that that's really essential um, because we want to be competitive, as you said, Dave. And we need to make sure that we are paying everyone fairly and competitively. So it's something that I would like to do, if not this coming fiscal year, then perhaps the next, um, to hire a consultant to do a comp and class study. Um, but this is sort of a representation of a sort of miniature version of that, um, but also making us compliant with the new minimum wage. Yeah. I can tell you anecdotally that we are competitive with our peers, um, it was something that I looked pretty deeply into when working through the director hiring process. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm pretty confident that we're in a good place. Good in terms of not too high, not too low? Is that- Competitive, in, yeah. Competitive. Yeah, okay. Do so most I, do most libraries because of the fiscal year make the change mid year, or was that just our decision to do that? Different libraries have different fiscal years, so it just depends. Oh, okay. Um, it so certainly makes sense to me to do it that way, just because why would you want to do it? Change our budget mid year. Right. I'm not very good at economics. Ask my husband. <laughs> All right. The motion on the floor is to approve the updated salary scale as presented. Chris, please call the roll. Matt? Uh, yes. Marianne? Yes. Tara? Yes. Dave? Yes. Chris? Yes. Richard? Yes. And Christina? Yeah. Motion passes. All right, exhibit C4, collection management policy review and discussion. Um, there is no motion to be made here. The collection management policy has not been updated since 2017. I'd like feedback from trustees on whether any updates might be in order or any other comments? I think that um, one of the library's main missions is to be an advocate for intellectual freedom within the community. And um, the, the board doesn't really have a huge role to play in that. The one thing that we can do is um, make sure that our board policy is in accordance with those goals and to support our director and our library staff yeah. in any event that intellectual freedom is challenged in any way. Um, so, I really just wanted you guys to have the opportunity to take a look at our collection management policy to kind of see what that commitment looks like for us in our small role. And, um, you know, offer any input or anything else that you might have. 
there, there aren't any time frames uh, on this. Is this something that is a continual process or is it done once a year? How often is the weeding process uh, take place? It's, it's all continual throughout the year, weeding as well as acquisitions. Um, and, and that is best practices, I, I can say, even though I'm somewhat of a newcomer um, <laughs> to Fox River Valley. But um, the weeding process and the acquisition process are perfectly in line with what is recommended by the American Library Association and the Public Library Association. And uh, frankly, in my experience, I think our policy is, is excellent. But it is a continual process to answer your question. Um, and, and most libraries do it that way. Um, it, and it simply just makes sense. It's very practical. You know, when you, when you add new materials, you're going to have to weed out other materials simply to make room, uh, but also to keep the content current and relevant. So it makes sense for us to do it on a continual basis. But we do need a bigger library. <laughs> 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 I'm surprised by the the simple nature of our challenge policy. Um, a lot of challenge policies that I see involve committees or you know a multi-step process, um, and this one seems pretty simple. It's just up to the director. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It it seems a little. Um, sticky to me, but I don't I was know. wondering how often that gets, gets used. How often do people ch challenge? Is it, you know, once a year, once a month, once a week? <laughs> well, that's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked. Um, in the short time that I've been here, we haven't had any challenges, but um, throughout my career, I've had maybe half a dozen or so in 25 years. So it's not common. Having said that though, um, Lately, there have been a lot of challenges across the country in schools and public libraries. I'm thankful that that hasn't come up here and I hope it doesn't. Um, but if it did, the board's responsibility would involve some final decisions if it was a particularly um, severe challenge. Um, in most cases, it is up to the director and the procedure that we follow um, is for if patrons want to pursue um, you know, their challenge or their disagreement with us, they can fill out a form um, and then I can, if, if the staff is unable to handle um, the request, then it comes to me um, where I would normally make the final decision. But if the patron was not satisfied with that, they could easily take it to the board uh, for final decision. So um, I think that our, our current policy that is in your packet, as well as um, the ALA's freedom to read statement and freedom to view statement are all very, very strong um, and could withstand any challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, makes makes sense. Let's keep it simple. And and if it becomes an issue in, in the future and, and the board has to be involved, then that, that that's our job, so. I agree. Absolutely. I I think to keep it simple is a good idea. Yeah. And quite honestly, I think uh, unless we start getting a multitude of challenges, we don't need to make changes. Uh, mm -hmm. We can always revisit it if we need to. And mm -hmm. hopefully times will quell a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. I'm going that way, <laughs> but, but, okay. You're right, Dave, it's not. <laughs> Would be nice. Take it home. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I think the bottom line is just that um, our role is to support the library, right? And the director and to um, support and provide support, but not take a leadership role in that in any way, shape, or form. Um, I agree. Mm -hmm. And, and again, the, one of the library's main missions is to support intellectual freedom. So, so that's, I, I do feel that there's a, uh, 
feeling out there that the board does do that kind of thing. Um, that they, that we, you know, have, have control over that. And the only reason I'm saying that was because when I ran for this position, people asked me what I would do. And I said, you know, that's not part of my role as a trustee, sure. but it d did come up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just perception. Mm -hmm. it's really all right anything else nope. um i had actually planned for us to go into executive session however um only two trustees did their homework and i would really like um more oh. input before we go into this discussion. So um, if tying your thoughts to the strategic plan was a challenge, then maybe just send me your thoughts. Maybe that would be easier. Um, and if you can do that in the next couple of weeks so that I can kind of prepare a summary before our next meeting, then we can go into executive session and have that discussion next time. Does okay, although I, I didn't see a problem with the strategic plan as I read it, so. Um, no, 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 it, it was looking at the strategic plan and, um, figuring out what the priorities there would be for evaluation. Ah, okay. I'll take another look at it. Okay. Yeah, thank you for reminding us of what homework we did not do. <laughs> uh, you've got a big zero in the grade book, Dave. <laughs> Just for the minutes, could you restate the homework clearly? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the homework is to take a look at the strategic plan, figure out what, um, what priorities you believe we should be focusing on for evaluation this year. For evaluation of the director or for, yeah, okay. All right. I, I do seem to recall something about that. Yep. <laughs> it was a couple of months ago. I need, I, need one of the, I need one of those homework books that they send home with the backpack, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, if, if, if that's too abstract, <laughs> just send me your thoughts okay. in general. Okay. Does anyone have anything else for tonight? Um, do any trustees have general questions or suggestions for future agenda items? All right, if none, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. <laughs> a really long time, guys. <laughs> seconded. <laughs> a motion has been made by Dave and seconded by Marianne to adjourn. Chris, please call the roll. Matt? Yes. Marianne? Yes. Tara? Yes. Dave? Yes. Chris, yes. Richard? Yes. Christina? Yes. Motion carried. We stand adjourned at 8.05 p.m. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Good meeting. You Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and